see I did the ventilatory threshold. Uh, during exercise, there's a transition when exercise is mostly kind of easy and not too bad. It's getting harder all along the way, but it transitions rather rapidly from very manageable to it starts to become very difficult. And if you're going to go do long distance running, you tend to run at something that's just below your threshold because you can't maintain things that are above your threshold for very long. How about your exertion now? Zero to ten. It's a one. Heart rate. One thirty-six. So one thing that we can look for, we won't have time to do it today, but you'll learn about this either in class with Dr. Ashley or next semester, is that we can try to identify where that threshold occurs by looking at some of the gas exchange values that are available on a device like this. Um, when we transition from that relatively easy to much harder exercise, we have a significant shift in the amount of CO2 that we're produ producing because when we move into more intense exercise, we start doing some of that work through anaerobic metabolism. We start digging into our glycolytic processes and into our phosphate stores. And when we produce energy anaerobically, we're going to increase the lactate accumulation, which is going to increase the ventilation. And when we increase ventilation, that's a direct result of the carbon dioxide that's being produced. Your exertion. One. 147. 147. So as DO2 has been going up pretty nicely, we're up now to 24. Uh, I'll note that the RQ or that respiratory exchange ratio, and we'll come back and briefly discuss these different values later. But at a minimum, we would want that. To show that he gave us a max effort, we would minimally want it to be 1.0 or greater. Preferably, it's going to be 1.15 or greater. So he's tracking towards that number, but he's really not working very hard yet. Also on that RPE scale, we don't have one in front of him, but he's working on a scale from 0 to 10. For him to give us a max effort, we would expect him to subjectively state that the exercise is perhaps a 9 or 10 on that scale. Your exertion is at 2. 163. When you think you have about one minute remaining before you're going to have to quit, raise your hand and then we're going to start cheering you on and trying to get you to the finish. Social facilitation. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's going to go negative. <laughs> So VO2 is up in the low 30s. Your target here again, the max set is low 50s. And then the RQ is now starting to get up into the 90s. So everything looks like it's a nice test. Um, we have an automatic heart rate sensor here, but it must not be uh, connected properly because it's giving us some bonus values. But Jeff has the heart rates up there. Now 170. Exertion. Four. Nice job. Keep those hips relaxed. Shoulders relaxed. Do a nice job. Into the 
less than 20 liters of total air moved per minute at the end of the test to more than 120 liters per minute. So he increased his breathing rate to a total by more than sixfold from beginning to the end of the test. I will give this report to Dr. Ashley and she will likely make it available to you for whatever your assignment is. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, so we mentioned lactate, but didn't say the value. If we were to take a lactate sample, the threshold typically for that one, and actually there's no debate on that one, um, you would want eight millimolars. Um, MMOL is the value that you'd be looking for for lactate to determine that someone's had a VO2 max step. Anything else?